Hey, this is Dave with the Shepherd School, and we're going to work today on part one of building our aluminum foundry. Now, the emphasis of this, the starting point of this, was uh, the Gingery Build Your Own Metal Shop series of books. It's eight sets of books that if you start from the beginning and go to the end, you'll end up with a complete metal shop that you build using nothing but hand tools and scrap. And so the very first book is how to build a foundry for melting aluminum. And it starts out with, with a five gallon size container. Um, they're kind of hard to find, so we've got this old popcorn container from Christmas. And we're going to start building the uh, building that. So we cut out some rough circles out of plywood and kind of put these rough handholds in it. It's not near as pretty as he did, but uh, we're working with some really old tools. Uh, cut another piece. I've got this tin. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little uh, uh, circle to fit in here. And one thing I want you to notice is there's a uh, little cut here to fit a lip of this, uh, this, this uh, metal in there. So we'll come back in a second and I'll show you what the completed f uh, form looks like. Alright, here's the tube. And it's kind of flimsy. The instructions say use sheet metal, but I couldn't find any. I'm not very good at messing with sheet metal, so this is aluminum flashing. I got a 20 by 10 foot roll, cut some off, and it's it's kind of fragile, but it's supposed to be because when you're done, you've got to be able to take this apart. But basically it just fits down here, and you ram the refractory mix around it. And so it's got to be sturdy enough for that, but it... But it uh, you need to be able to take it apart. So, now that that's done, we're going to go outside and we're going to make the refractory mix and uh, let that sit up overnight. Tomorrow we'll come in and we'll ram this thing together. Alright, here's what we're going to use to make the refractory. You can buy a refractory and if you're going to melt anything high temperature like uh, iron, which you need to try this first, uh, you're going to need to buy some refractory. This is pretty good for aluminum, bronze, brass, copper, that sort of stuff. Went down to the ceramics store and bought some fire clay. Fire clay is very, very um, powdery and, it, and it, uh, it's very, very fine. And then I got some placing. Okay, we're going to mix this two for one in the bucket. And we're going to mix the dry and mix it very well before we add water. Um, Gentry was saying that uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of water. You don't want to add too much water um, to it. He said for about 50 pounds of uh, fire clay, it'd be about three, two or three pints of water. So we're going to mix it in this five-gallon bucket. And uh, uh, so. And you don't want to breathe this stuff because when you add water to it, it's going to make. I'm going to dip in one of them. And two of these. Okay. One of the uh, fire clay to a sand. I'm going to mix that real good, then I'm going to do it again. You want to mix this to like a heavy mortar. In the heck with it. I think I am going to do this in the, in the wheelbarrow. The reason I did the bucket is because I figured it would be easier because we got to let this sit up overnight.
Okay. We, we're going to keep mixing this up because I'd rather have too much than not enough. But that's going to get boring for you. So I'm just going to show you the test that Gentry talks about to make sure that this is the, uh, the right consistency. You get it. You make a ball. Squeeze it. Right? If it holds its shape and it breaks apart like that, that should be the right consistency. So we're going to finish mixing some of this up. Then we're going to coat it with a piece of plastic and let it sit overnight. And tomorrow, we'll show you how to ram this stuff together. All right, here's the lid. And we kind of went a uh, uh, little different than the gingery instructions. They were talking about making a uh, cardboard form, a circle. And then wrapping sheet metal around it. Like I said, I use this flashing. It's gonna melt. I can almost guarantee it's gonna melt. Um, but hopefully it'll last long enough to uh, to uh, uh, do the shapes. Here's the lid, and right now it's it's kind of a mess of tape and wires. Uh, it'll get a lot uh, more clean as we burn everything off. When Outside the scope of instructions from the gingery book, uh, he used a concrete form. I used the lid as a form and then poked some holes and run some wire back and forth, put the, uh, the uh, exhaust hole in there. I also added some nails and I also put these U-bolts uh, in here as a lifting eye because we also went a little different on the uh, instructions as far as I didn't just leave the bucket. I figure I'm going to have to move this thing around and uh, uh, it's pretty fragile I would assume because uh, you know if it's anything like the fire brick I don't want to pick it up toss it around so I put it on this old wheelbarrow uh, or lawnmower body that I had left over from the uh, generator project. So the only thing that we did besides bolt it to that is we cut the air hole in there and now we're going to uh, to pound the um, the uh, uh, refractory in there and, uh, we're just putting this in and then we're gonna we're gonna pound it Trying to dump it in enough where it doesn't lose its round shape. Yep, I'm halfway afraid I'm not going to have enough refractory. I knew I should have went in my gut. Yesterday, of course, my lid is bigger than the plans called for, too. It only had to be two inches. keep doing that and then we're going to smooth it out and pull that circle out that the coke head and then I'll show you how we're going to uh, burn that in the oven. Alright there's our lid and now we're going to uh, to work on the actual uh, furnace. We've got the, uh, the form in there it's just sitting in the center. Then we've got these spacers um, they probably should have been cut a little thicker, but I'm using a bunch of junk wood. You could tell because half of it's starting to rot anyway, but uh, um, that's what I had. And we're going to uh, uh, pound it up to about two inches to where it gets here to the bottom of the hole. Then we're going to put in a uh, uh, little pipe there so we, so we don't lose that whole shape. We're going to pound all the way up to the top. 
pull the form out, and then we're going to put about two inches down at the bottom. So, put in about two inch worth at a time, and then pound it in there with my stick. All right, I got about half of this rammed in, and it's standing up by itself. So I took out the uh, spacers. Okay. So all you're doing. Is just ramming this in and you're making it like a brick. You gotta pound each layer on top of the layer below it so there's no air bubbles. Any air bubbles will uh, cause your refractory to crack and bust and not work. So. Definitely getting the workout. We'll have one big Arnold Schwarzenegger arm. <laughs> but at least I won't have his alimony and child support. <laughs> Alright, I can see why Gingery said use sheet metal. The, the flashing just wasn't strong enough. I'm going to have to fix that. But, uh, now we're going to try to take the thing apart and get it out without doing too much damage to my refractory. tools. There we go. Alright, so we uh, kind of fixed the little divots in there. And uh, filled in the bottom to the level of the uh, air pipe. Now what we're going to do is uh, put this back in the garbage bag, the plastic, until I can go to Lowe's or some other store and buy me some charcoal so we can uh, burn this thing out and uh, make all the clay fuse. So what we're going to do now is go upstairs and put the lid in our oven. Because we got to have the lid done when we fire the actual crucible or the actual foundry. I've got a plan to fix my point of view. I'm getting